Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for August 7th, 2021, at around 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time. A lot to discuss today as we have three potential systems in the main development region of the Atlantic that may try to develop over the next several days. So let's go ahead and jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we noticed that we have a couple of systems on our radar for today. We have a system here in the Central Atlantic, another system in the Central Atlantic, and then in the Far Eastern Atlantic, we have Invest Area 92L. 92L's chances have decreased very substantially over the last uh, day, and that's in part because this is now moving northward into the cooler, stable air around here to the north. But the Central Main Development Region system right here is likely going to be designated Invest Area 93L probably within the next day or two. And this is when uh, this is a system that I do believe has a fair shot at developing. And then we have a central uh, system here kind of in the western part, uh, the, the furthest west system. This one not designated as, of an in, as an invest or anything, but it does have some marginal chances. But this will be bringing some shower and thunderstorm activity to portions of the northern Antilles here and over towards the U.S. British Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico within the next uh, five days or so. So this will be something to monitor, especially as it uh, gets downstream here towards the Bahamas. Uh, again, no real model support for anything to develop, but it is hurricane season, so we'll be kind of watching that very closely. Another way we can kind of see this represented, this is the five-day graphical tropical weather outlook from the National Hurricane Center. Again, here's our three systems in the Atlantic. We noticed that our invest area 92L, its development chances are basically done now down to about a 10% chance over the next couple of days. This wave here, I believe, has a 20% chance as it moves off towards the west northwest, though this will encounter a little bit of unfavorable conditions. And then the central system here, this wave in the central part of the Atlantic, this one has a 40% chance of developing as it moves off towards the west and northwest. And again, this too will be uh, approaching the Lesser Antilles within the next six or seven days. So within the next week's time, we could be dealing with a system potentially uh, getting close to the Lesser Antilles. So for you folks there, of course, it is something to monitor. I don't think this would be anything especially strong or anything like that, um, given that we don't really have a lot of model support, which we'll talk about here in a moment. And then, of course, 92L, again, its development chances are basically diminishing and uh, ending at this point. Uh, but we can tell here on the visible satellite image from 92L that there is still a little bit of convection today. Uh, again, we've had a little bit more of centralized convection. This is the area of low pressure right about here. We notice that there is some convection that is surrounding this, but this is, of course, where the Cabo Verde Islands are. So the islands... Here, of the Cabo Verde Islands will receive some impacts, gusty winds, heavy rainfall. Uh, other than that, this is not going to be a tropical system. Again, it's just moving into cooler sea surface temperatures. And we can also kind of tell, and this is delayed from just about an hour ago or a little over an hour ago. But we noticed that the shadow, the shadow cumulus deck over through here is very indicative of just this very hostile uh, air dry, stable, cooler air that is to the north of there, cooler sea surface temperatures. So this is likely not going to have a, a decent shot at developing. And, and in fact, that's why the Hurricane Center has now lowered these uh, this down to now just about a 10% chance over the next couple of days. However, we're starting to watch again out towards the Central Atlantic. And again, this is now kind of a zoomed out Central Atlantic look. 92L here is just off the screen. This is our next system here in the Central Atlantic, and then this is the furthest west system that we'll be watching. So we'll start here furthest west. We'll, we'll work from west to east. We got this little system right here. We noticed that, again, it does have a little bit of convergence with it, but not sufficiently so. There's not a really strong uh, signal of rotation in here. There is a broad circulation, undoubtedly. Uh, this is, however, the monsoon trough, and because of that, there's always going to be uh, circulations, little circulations that are embedded in here. And uh, we can see that again, there is a lot of convection around it. And that's the one thing that is going for this is that there is convection that is trying to bundle and consolidate and a little bit more so than what we've seen over the past couple of days with this area. But we notice as it begins to move off towards kind of the Northwest like this, 
there is a lot of dry air to the north of this system. And that is going to be the one thing that will probably plague this system for most of its life is that we have a lot of dry air just around it. Now, this dry air is not really being forced into the system. We don't really have a lot of shear that is going to be impinging any one of these systems. But we also work in tandem here. If we work back to the central system, this is uh, what will probably be 93L. We can tell that there is a little bit more of a vigorous circulation to it. And we've had convection that is been on the southern side of this over the past day or two. And in fact, we've had a lot more convection than we have over the past day, uh, you know, or so with this system. And again, we definitely noticed that it, it is a well-defined circulation. Uh, undoubtedly, it's a well-defined circulation, but it really lacks having deep convection. And we noticed that again, we have a lot of this dry air, you can tell, that's going to be kind of squashing this system. And it's one of the things that may in fact prohibit development. This dry air is going to be funneled in uh, pretty easily because again, there's not really a moist pocket to the north of this. Now, again, this is sitting at right about 15 north or so, and it is sitting just about at 40 west. And what we know is that the sea surface temperatures and upper ocean heat content uh, for this part of, uh, of the, you know, world where the system is at is not particularly the best. It is very marginal at the moment. Now, as this moves westward, of course, you know, as this moves west and northwest, of course, this will have a better environment once it finds itself over here. Uh, but the real question is, is it able to maintain convection over the next couple of days or so? Now, if we look here at the 850 millibar vorticity map, this has been in the atmosphere at about 5,000 feet off the ground. And for context here, these reds and whites, that's your higher cyclonic spin at your 5,000 foot level. What we notice here is our three systems, again, uh, starting here from west to east, this central or this furthest west system here. Again, this is still very loosely defined. It's not really well bundled uh, like you see over here. Uh, but it's not really well bundled, and that's going to be one of the problems is that this is actually kind of uh, along this monsoon trough. And because this is along the monsoon trough, you have three individual systems that are trying to compete for energy. And when you typically have that, you end up kind of creating an environment where tropical cyclones can't really develop. If this was just one coherent system, let's pick this one right here. If this is one coherent system, this would probably be a named storm already. By the way, the next name is Fred. That's on the list. But we can tell here with our central system, a lot of energy. It's bundling very well, and it's very well rounded. And with that being said, again, if you get convection to sustain itself for a decent period of time, you can end up getting a very well-defined closed circulation and again, the conditions will become increasingly better as this moves towards the west-northwest here. And we can see that in the upper ocean heat content map. Again, uh, this map updated as of this morning. And just for context here, you, these lighter blue colors onwards towards the right of the scale, this represents higher upper ocean heat content in the uh, sea surface, you know, at, at the sea you know, to kind of work with in the ocean there. And these tropical cyclones love to have plenty of fuel and again, the warmer the colors get, the more fuel you'll basically have, is, is for lack of better terms. Now, again, our system is sitting roughly at about 15 degrees north, which is right about here and just about 40 west. So it's sitting roughly about here right now. And we notice that, again, the upper ocean heat content is not particularly high. Now, it is there but it's on the very low end of the spectrum. And as this moves towards the west, northwest here, the environment does become better and the sea surface temperature warms and the upper ocean heat content also gets a much better signal the further west you get. So that leads to if the upper air environment can cooperate you potentially could get a storm to develop in this region. And it would not be surprising to see something develop. Now with 92L, again, 92L sitting roughly about here, its environment is just not really that favorable. It's moving into a less than favorable environment. 
And once you start getting up here, you virtually have no sea surface temperatures uh, that are supportive for tropical cyclones. And with that being said, upper ocean heat content is just non-existent. Of course, where it's at highest, of course, is, you know, right here in the Caribbean and, of course, you know, in the Bahamas and off, and off the Florida coast and in the Gulf of Mexico. That's, of course, where it's the highest at this point in time, and that's to be expected. But again, we'll have to watch this. And this is the GFS forecast, the 850 millibar vorticity, again, spinning the atmosphere of 5,000 feet off the ground. And this is the 12Z run fell for 2 p.m. this afternoon. Here's our three systems right now. Again, we have this system right here, uh, potentially soon to be 93L and then 92L right here. And we notice that, again, this is very well modeled in the forecast that we have, or very well modeled here that we have a decent area of vorticity. Again, the strung out vorticity associated with invest area 92L and the, some of the associated vorticity with this lead wave over here. Now, again, we kind of move this forward in time or before we do that, we also notice that we have a ridge of high pressure to the north. So most of these storms are moving kind of due west northwest. We have a weakness in the ridge over here because we notice that we do have a little bit of a trough in through here. And this trough is breaking down the ridge over here and kind of shoving this back towards the east. So you have storms that do gain a little bit more latitude. Now, over the next few days, again, this ridge will kind of reset. We notice what happens, though. In the GFS forecast, we start to get a bundling of the energy here. This is the 12Z run again. And we notice that there's bundling of the energy down here. Now, according to the GFS forecast, if we look here at the sounding uh, for the, the average area sounding, what we notice is that the shear columns are relatively light. We don't really have a lot of shear in through here. And... It's all almost uniformly out of the east. We also notice that, again, we have some pretty decent moisture, especially uh, right up above about 400 millibars. We have some very stout moisture at the surface. We have a moist column, but we do have a little bit of mid-level dry air. And this mid-level dry air is from the tropical easterly jet, uh, again, transporting some of that dry, stable air off the coast of Africa. And this could potentially interact with our system. If we look here... At the 700 to 400 millibar relative humidity product here, again, this is where our system would ex uh, reside, kind of right in through here. And what we kind of notice is that, again, the system is going to be potentially squashed because we have this jet kind of forcing all this dry, stable air just north of our system. And this is kind of the convergence zone, basically, where you will, where, you know, you have that moisture being at its highest. And this is our other, this is our lead wave right through here. Not really developing much at all, but that's our lead wave. And then this is our next wave right here where the chances are probably going to be the highest. Now, if we move this forward here on the GFS in particular, the GFS does indeed become, or have this become a tropical cyclone where the development chances would be pretty high through here. Again, this is 992 millibars. And if we move this out to about day five, it's about 993 knocking on this doorstep just north of Barbados. But if we back this up, again, how is this dry air going to work? Again, this dry air can be easily transported into the system, being if it's small, then you would, you know, if it's a small system too, this is another problem, smaller systems are going to have a larger chance of dissipating real quick if dry air gets entrained into it. Because again, the circulation just, it, you know, the circulation is robust, but it's just not as resilient to that dry air. And it's a lot of complex interactions that occurs there, but it's going to be very crucial because if this is a smaller end system, again, this, these small changes could mean a lot in terms of intensity differences. So and that's assuming a storm even forms. Uh, again, you have another storm that will be forming out here, potentially in the tropical Pacific out here. So the GFS is on board with the system that develops, but not so fast. The European model, for instance, this is the same time frame, hour 72. This is uh, valid as of 8 a.m. August 10th. So this is Tuesday, August 10th. We notice the euro has a wave, yes, approaching the Lesser Antilles. This is actually, I believe, a lead wave. Let's see. Yeah, that's the lead wave. But notice what, what happens. This central system here doesn't even develop, and it actually falls apart on the model. Now, 
Some of the energy from the lead wave, like we talked about, may in fact get into the Bahamas here. We'll have to watch that over the next couple of days just to see if anything develops. If anything, might be a little bit of a rainmaker for, for portions of those and maybe even portions of South Florida. But the Euro model is not on board with this. So that kind of just tells us that there's model differences and the Euro is not all or nothing. But if I were to have, if, if I were to, you know, really be at the forecaster desk right now at the Hurricane Center, I would have to say this model inconsistency is the one thing that would preclude me from going any higher than 40% with my chances. And uh, for, for reference here, this is the European ensembles, and it just adds to the complexity here. The European ensembles more so develop this lead wave here than it, than it does develop this other wave back here. It develops this lead wave and continues it. And you can see that it develops the lead wave maybe for a second, or that this second system develops it quickly, drops it, and this lead wave picks up and develops that and tracks it more towards the Bahamas. So, uh, and you can see here at about day five, this is uh, hour 120. Again, it doesn't even have a lot of model support for that. But again, there's a lot of inconsistencies here. Now, the upper air environment, again, is there. If we jump back here to the GFS and we look at the 200 millibar wind, we notice that the upper air environment, of at least on the GFS, would be there to support a system. You've got healthy outflow from the storm. The one thing that would potentially preclude it, there is a little bit of a displaced uh, anticyclone here, creating a little bit of shear like that. Uh, so that might shear the system off just a tad bit, but this uh, upper level anticyclone is also backing, this upper level low is also backing towards the west as the storm is also moving west. So they're kind of moving in tandem, which means that the shear direction uh, shouldn't really be much of a problem. So again, we'll be watching this. It's not something that's overly concerning right now, but we're going to have to watch this. Uh, again, for our folks, of course, in the Lesser Antilles, you know, you still have time to prepare. Again, we'll be watching this lead wave here, but you still got about, you know, three or four days before this lead wave even gets to the to the part of the Greater Antilles. And, of course, you've got probably more than a week till this system gets here. And then this system I really wouldn't even worry about. So, all right. With that being said, hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.